Hi guys, thanks for tuning in again. Um, I've come to a little car park just near Woodspring Priory in Weston, um, and it's just by the mouth of the River Banwell. And there happens to be a couple of boats that moor in the mouth of the river. Um, so I thought I'd try and shoot them today, but I don't want to just take a normal snapshot. I want to do long exposures of, of these boats on the river. But obviously, if you take a long exposure of a boat on water, it's going to move and it's going to blur and it's just going to look a big old mess, really. So there's a technique which, yeah, you guessed it, exposure blending. So what I'm going to attempt to do is take a normal, like a standard shot of the boat with a faster shutter speed. I might have to raise, raise the ISO or change the aperture, we'll see. Uh, and then a long exposure for the, for the clouds in the sky. And then blend those two together in Photoshop and try and create the image that I'm after. Um, I mean, the downside is the clouds are, are moving. They're moving fairly quickly, but the wind is absolutely howling. So keeping the camera still for, you know, like a, a 50 second minute or so exposure for the long exposure, uh, I think it's going to prove tricky. But um, I'll give it a go and we'll see what happens. Now I've had a bit of a think about it and due to the wind, if I can't get the boat shot to work, what I might actually do is go up to the, the old Ministry of Defence um, compound and see if I can get any, uh, any compositions up there. So I do have a fallback, but we'll see what happens. All right, so I've made my first rookie mistake. The tide's not actually in far enough for the boats to be on the water. So that ain't gonna work. Although if I'm here long enough, I could come back to this because the tide is on the way in, but it's obviously just not in far enough yet. So we'll see. I mean, the clouds are looking absolutely fabulous. They're moving at some speed, but there is a hell of a lot of wind to contend with. But <laughs> yeah, what a numpty. What a complete muppet. Not uh, considering the fact that the tide might not be in. But like I said, you know, I can stay out for a couple of hours and by then it should have reached the, uh, the mouth of the river. So the other thing that I think I'm going to have a problem with though is getting into a position where I can actually get a composition. I may need to be on the other side of the river. I've never been there before so I'm not sure how I'd get there. But and do you know what, it actually rained a minute ago. It actually had about five minutes or so of, uh, of rain. This, I mean, the, the clouds are epic. Wind is just mental. The light, we're getting little pockets of light breaking through, which is absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. But if it rains, then that changes everything, doesn't it? The trouble is with wind like this is, you know, if you put in a 100 mil by 150 mil filter, you know, a big flat piece of glass on the front of your lens, it just acts like a sail and catches this wind. And even the best tripod in the world is not going to keep your camera still. So, it's going to be challenging, definitely going to be challenging. I mean, those clouds, right? Fantastic. I still haven't got any wellies either, by the way, so I can be restricted as to where I can stand. I'm not very well prepared, am I really? Look at these flowers. I don't think I've ever seen these before. These are awesome. A nice splash of purple, isn't it? This whole, this whole, I guess they're mud flats, is, uh, is actually covered in it, which is very cool. So normally I'd go up on the hill there, over to those, those bays that I like shooting, or that bay that I like shooting. This time I'm gonna come around the coastline instead, 
And just up in front is one of the parts of the Ministry of Defence, or the old Ministry of Defence. I was hoping I might be able to find something interesting to shoot down here. So I've just spotted this wooden beam and a metal pole of some description. I mean, there's a lot of decay and rust and rot and, and all that kind of thing. And I actually really like it. So I might get the camera out and just take a shot of this. I don't know. What do you think? I'm gonna have a go. I'm thinking square crop, black and white, Nice and contrasty. Well, let's stop talking about it and do it. Okay, so that's hopefully the first shot in the bag. So, we we'll move on around this coast and see what we can find. So I just come up into the into the Ministry of Defence or ex Ministry of Defence uh, compound. And I should think my mic is really struggling right now. Because there is some serious windage going on. Uh, there was nothing else really of interest down around the corner there on the coast. So I've come up into here to uh, have a look around really and just see, see if there's anything I can shoot. I had a look on Google Maps there was a couple of um, kind of like slipway type things which they used to use which I'm hoping I can use as a leading line maybe like I said don't panic it's the uh, the area is no longer used. I'm just going to have a look at this slipway. This is one that I could see on Google Maps. I think this is how they got the pallets of munitions down into the into the sea before they detonated it. So that's what they used to do. Let's go up onto this little point here and have a look. It's a nice light coming through again. See, I really need to find a composition so I can utilise this light. Uh, that's quite nice. The tide coming in over the sandbanks or mud banks. I'm going to take a look at that. Oh, geez, this wind. This is going to be impossible. This might be a no filters job, this. Oh, I don't think this is a bad shot. Uh, it's kind of minimalist, so I've zoomed in, uh, what am I shooting at, about 65mm-ish, something like that, um, and I've put the, where the tide is, see where the tide is coming in, 
and you're getting a whitewash up the up the beach there or up the mud. Um, oh, there's a cloud just moved. If you can see that, you see how that massive shadow is moving right across the scene there. It kind of gives you a bit of separation, I think. Oh, it's starting to break now, so I'll take a few more shots as it's uh, as it's moving. Nice patchy light on the ground. Like I said, it's nothing special. It's going to be a kind of minimalist. I've got no filters on whatsoever here, so just racked off a few. So difficult to see. That's not bad. I might be able to might be able to make use of that. And uh, yeah, thanks, Mark Thompson, for uh, you know for for pleading with me not to go out because you wanted to go out, and every time I go out, the weather turns crap. You know, I, I really appreciate that, mate. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's nice to know I've got your support. Yeah, cheers, buddy. It's probably not even any point in trying to show you that, is there? But you can see my histogram is kind of nicely in the middle. Um, you're not going to see that. Like I said, it's nothing, nothing to write home about. But you know, got to shoot something, haven't I? It just caught my eye. I liked the the way the uh, the white was leading through the scene. Right, let's move on. So on my way back to the boat, I decided to stop and shoot that wall again. The one with all the rusty poles and the old corroded wooden posts. All that texture and detail. So I took a slightly different composition, a vertical. Got a bit closer. Uh, framed it so it was nice and straight and square in the frame. Well I hope I did. It's how it looked on the back of the screen. So hopefully it comes across like that in the final image. And. Uh, yeah, just waited for a bit of light, took a number of exposures uh, and I'm thinking black and white with that image for sure. Hopefully I can uh, give a nice gritty black and white image that will um, do it justice. This old boat now. The thing is, there's no light falling on it at the moment, so it's, uh, it's not doing anything exciting. But I'm not sure. I might have a look. boats are actually on the water but the problem I've got now is getting to them in my current footwear which is far from ideal to say the least I have to say this isn't looking too bad God, you know what guys I might be able to do this It's the wind. The wind is going to be my biggest issue. Right. I've actually made it to a position where I can shoot them. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do it with a 10 stop. I don't know. Alright, so I decided to give it a go with the boats. I set up a composition, which I'll show you now, in portrait mode, incorporates, sadly these posts are just in the bottom, I can't do anything about that. This boat, this boat, and the boat in the distance there on the water. So these two are obviously static. These two poles here, uh, they are waving about in the wind, so they might cause a bit of an issue, but 
It should be all right. There'll be blur on the top, but the bottom should be, should be good. So basically I've taken two shots, one with a 10 stop, which has given me a bit of movement in the sky. Uh, they're not moving as quick as I'd like, really. I mean, the winds, as I said earlier, the winds are so high that, you know, I'm taking a risk with a, I think it was about a 25 second, 30 second exposure. Um, but looking on the back of the camera, it seems to have paid off. So took one exposure for the movement in the clouds and then took off the 10 stop and all the other filters. Well, there was only a 10 stop on there, but you know, took all the filters off, took another shot, um, which was about 1 80th, 1 100th of a second uh, to try and get the water, the boat on the water um, sharp, try and freeze the movement. And then what I'll do later, hopefully, in Photoshop, is uh, I'll blend those two together. I mean, I shouldn't have to blend much because this, you know, the, the foreground here is, is static anyway. It's only the boat on the water. So I've got to make a decision on whether I just try and mask the boat, which could be difficult, you know, and have a bit of blur to the water, or whether I use a graduated um, blend, which means the water will be, won't be smoothed off, but you'll have the movement in the sky. But uh, I've got options, uh, which I think, I think it worked. I mean, with the long exposure, the fact that the wind was quite high, in this situation, it might not matter anyway, because the boat's up the front and all this bottom half of the image here um, is gonna be from a, a shot with a faster shutter speed. So all I'm after is the sky where, you know, the sky is blurred anyway because it's with a 10 stop. So if there was camera shake, shouldn't really make much of a difference because I'll be using the, um, the foreground. Everything that I want sharp was taken from a different image. So, you know, it should be good. So I'll see how that goes. And if it, um, if it works out all right, I might actually make a video about how you do the blend. It's actually very, very easy. I mean, if you, if you use Photoshop, it's, it's really easy. If you don't use Photoshop, it might seem a little daunting, but it's really not that bad. On a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see. From There's another boat just there. This white one which I'm thinking I might try, I might try a shot with that one. Sadly, I'm not getting as much movement as I'd like. Question is, do I put another, do I put a six stop on as well and really go for it? Yeah, maybe. I mean, if I'm gonna do it, let's do it, yeah? All right, let's do it. From up here, the world seems small. We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We're meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free I'm definitely thinking I might do one of this boat here because the clouds are going straight across the frame. So you'll have this lovely linear, these lovely linear lines, linear lines, these linear streaks of clouds going across the sky. All right, so I've just taken the, bear with me a second, I'm just trying to put my filter holder on. I've just taken the shot, the sharp shot, the static shot, if you like, and I'm now putting on the 10 stop and the 3 stop and we will go back down into bold mode like so I'm going to stand around this side to try and shelter the camera from the wind and open the shutter for another 3 minutes 50 I'm going to go for Three minutes 50 and I didn't start a stopwatch. Muppetry, Muppetry. Too busy talking to you lot, that's what it is. Talking to you and not concentrating. I hope this works, I do. 
Because every time I have a plan and every time I plan to go and do something, something changes, the elements change, the, you know, the weather just goes and uh, I can never do it and I, never, I can never show you guys what I want to show you. So I'm hoping that this one's going to be successful. Take a step back to see the truth around you. From a distance, you can tell. Yeah, I mean, hopefully I'll have something to show you. Hopefully the exposure blends will work. If not, I'm pretty confident I'll have a couple of reasonable photos of the boats to show you. Um, but uh, I think I'll wrap it up there. So if you enjoyed the video, guys, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Uh, if you do subscribe, click on the little bell and you'll get notified. Um, and, you know, it'd be great if you were to give the uh, swallow just literally nearly flew into my legs. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, if uh, you'd consider giving the video a share, that would be great as well. Um, any questions, chuck them in the comments and um, hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in guys.